Excellent, Joyce. I will answer your question first. Um, also, later, remind me to show you this guide because I'm just going to give a shout out to Estonia. Uh, as uh, Professor Linz pointed out, I became an e-resident of Estonia, and they gave me a book. It's called The Relocation Guide. So, Bielenfeld, you guys don't have a relocation guide. And it's bright pink, so I won't lose it. And so Estonia has taken the position that in the world of digital transformation, they're going to let all you guys catch up, if you can. Questions? Um, what you describe is a future where people will not be able to understand the world they live in. So is there any reason we should trust digitization? We should have faith in it. I, I see the potential. I see there is a way to make the world more efficient and um, universal income and stuff, but um, is there a reason to trust into a future of that kind? I'm, I think that's kind of a German question. <laughs> <laughs> so if I have to come down to it, I travel a lot. I trust this more than I do myself, because it tells me, where am I at? It connects me to resources. It literally got me from, where did I come? I came from Manchester, England. I, got, I had to get to Manchester first, I used this thing. Then it, when I got to Dusseldorf, I asked Siri a question. And then I got on the train to Berlin and it told me to get off. And then it told me to go get my haircut. And then it told me where to go get some food. And then it told me, it tells me a lot. It actually knows a lot about me. It's very weird. And so can you trust it? I don't know. It's one of those existential questions that we'll have to think about. Because part of it is, as companies and organizations grow bigger, they know more about you. They literally have the ability to shape your brain, like if you give a baby an iPad. And so how can you trust something that you don't know is actually influencing you? And so we're going to go have some beers and talk about this. Yeah. It's an important thing. I, I, I wish to have a future where people still think. I don't want them to be reprogrammed not to think about things. And that's uh, that's the important thing. If we if we are if we should, if we will be able to give people an understanding of what really happens to digitization. Some months ago, Google Translate learned to translate from Korean to Japanese, and even Google scientists didn't know how it worked. And that's uh, that's something I think. Yeah, that it, it's a tough guess to to think the future will be only bright. It makes us vulnerable to the systems, and we have to understand those systems, and that's why we need computer and science and information science. So one of the, I was in Estonia last week, and I was having a uh, was on a team for artificial intelligence, and we're having this conversation because my premise is that uh, AIs need common sense, and they will learn that because if, hey Alexa. Uh, buy me something on Amazon. How many do you want? I don't know. Buy me a million. She, she needs to know that I'm joking. If I'm talking to a robot and I tell it to go jump off a bridge, it needs to know that I'm joking. So um, speech recognition, AIs will learn common sense in English, in American common sense, and then also in German common sense, which is crazy and scary. <laughs> because later, part of the conversation I was having is, are AIs going to have personalities? Because if you're a true artificial intelligence, you have no handicaps, you have no handcuffs. You are a thinking independent thing, and you take the same data input, and you could end up with a personality that's Obama, Trump, or Merkel, all from the same data. And it's infinitely smarter than you and everyone else in the room. So it, it is definitely a question. Um, that's going to come up because, again, it goes back to you. How is this going to impact my day-to-day -day life? We're going to have this conversation of, are we going to just agree to everyone's getting paid a certain amount of money? Because then other, otherwise there's no jobs. And you're, in particular, if you're a business person, you need to be thinking, I just remembered. Steven, stand up for us, Steven. Stand up. It's okay. You can... You, you get to be American for the moment, Stephen. So Stephen, he's CEO in Haber. It's my second word in German. And Haber means CEO for Impex Trading. He actually helps your businesses 
with digital transformation. His family came to Germany in 1955 from New Zealand, and that's why his business does, you can sit down if you want. <laughs> that's, why, that's why his business, Impex tr Trading, you can get his card, that's why his business does business in New Zealand, because they're our neighbors. That's why he does business in Australia, in Brussels, in Belgium, in uh, the Netherlands, pretty much anywhere that, where they speak English and German. His business helps other businesses with their digital transformation. It's gonna be a thing, because we're talking here about our livelihoods. This is not some existential maybe, this isn't a climate change debate, where we can, maybe it's not debated here in Germany now, I think about it. In the US, we debate it all the time. And so it's not a climate change debate. It's a, this is happening. Oracle is saying, is going to print and saying, yeah, we automated something and then we fired the department who did it because they built an AI or a dumb bot who now does it. So if you have another question, I think I have two more minutes. This gentleman right here has a question. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for delivering um, your keynote speech. It was very interesting, first of all. Um, while you were delivering it, um, I used the opportunity to Google you and your company, and uh, I learned that you are deeply engaged in uh, crypto mining mm -hmm. and uh, the new cryptocurrency trend that uh, came up uh, over the last couple of years. And my question would be whether you think this will be a real alternative to the um, usual system where the government controls money? Do you think it's going to replace it someday or will it uh, run in parallel in the meantime? So what's your opinion on that? What's your name? My name is Markus Schirmbeck. Awesome. I used to be a student here at F.A. Bielefeld okay, a couple excellent. of years ago. Bielefeld has some radical graduate <laughs> alumni. He wants to know, is cryptocurrency going to fundamentally change the world? And because I don't want to end up in Guantanamo Bay, I'm going to tell you no. <laughs> so what are you telling us? Um, uh, so crypto blockchain is the easiest, cheapest way to use blockchain is to make cryptocurrencies out of it. It's like flour. If you flour that you bake with, you make pancakes or you can make souffle. Cryptocurrencies are pancakes. It's just the easiest way to use blockchain. The souffles are medical records, are transportation and logistics. So I, we do mining. Um, and we'd love it because blockchain is great technology and now we no longer have a blockchain conversation because the technology has been validated. We have a conversation about is our cryptocurrencies going to change the world because now we're talking about this thing, cryptocurrencies, not the tech because the tech works. The tech has a $150 billion market cap. It works. And so will cryptocurrencies change? That's a really good question, because part of the interesting thing about cryptocurrencies are uh, if you're on a, it's semi-anonymous, right? I can send and receive cash anywhere in the world with my cell phone. This amazing thing, which I sort of trust, sort of don't trust, depending on who's listening. Um, it's a tough question because it's one where governments and Finance Watch are going to have to tackle, because can you pay us in cryptocurrencies? Absolutely. How do we pay taxes on that? I don't know. We're working on it, sort of, maybe. Because if I sent you money, you're just a number. There's no personally identifiable information that attaches it you to you. So I don't know. And so if no one pays taxes, uh, I think in Greece, 3% of the population pays taxes. This is like a real stat. Don't laugh at it, it's like a real thing. And you can see how, what a uh, impact that's had on their economy. And so when you have a, an option, where you have lots of people who are outside of the normal regulated economy. It's a government question that you'll, they'll have to tackle because it does threaten and jeopardize their historical hold on the banking, uh, the banking world. And so that's actually a later, longer conversation, preferably over beers. So you can join him and I, and we'll have this conversation. But yes, they will have profound impacts it will continue to have profound impacts. I encourage you all to go out and not only, since you already know about blockchain, also check out cryptocurrencies. Because um, in the future, when you go to negotiate with an AI, because HR is one of the first things we're gonna automate, you might wanna get paid in Bitcoin 
our Ethereum or any of the other cryptocurrencies out there. So I think that's my time. I'll be around all day. I'll be the black guy. It shouldn't be too hard to spot. And so if you have a question, just come up and ask me. Thanks again. Samson, you still have some minutes. Oh, I do? <laughs> if you like. Yeah. We, we could still have one or two questions, so I still have 10 minutes. Oh, Are I do have 10 minutes. More questions or... The okay. question is, I have, you have all these young students sitting in front of you. Uh-huh. Make them some hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make give, them some give hope. Give them some hope. And you have a lot gonna, of faculty, you uh -huh. have a lot of faculty sitting as well today. Well, so I'm going to give you some hope. They should, they should speed up <laughs> with the lecture content. Uh, I'm going to give you some hope because you asked about cryptocurrencies, and this is how people stay connected. I'm on stage. He Googles me. He finds out some information about me. You can go to samsonwilliams.com, and it gives you a brief bio. And so nowadays, as students, if you have what you think is a radical, crazy thought, how you want to change the world, there's probably 10 million other people who are having this exact same thought. And so if, you, if they're not st standing right next to you or sitting right next to you, connect with them online because that's how Bitcoin became such a viable commodity. People who had this thought that they wanted to change the government or change the current infrastructure got together and started talking. Bitcoin, I love it because it, is a, it doesn't have a board. There's no CEO. It's decentralized. They don't vote on, they have a voting system. It's a very large bureaucracy. And yet, no one's hacked it. And people try it every day. And its market value has continued to go up. And so I'm working with another company who's creating a decentralized thing where they build it and then they walk away because the community will maintain it. And that's a different version of a corporation. It's a different version of business. And so, yes, as you learn the tried and true here at the university, also think to yourselves, in this digital transformation where we can get on a Slack channel, a Telegram, a Snapchat, a WhatsApp, and connect with everyone around us who are our peers, how can we collectively work to change the world? Because it's gonna have a really big impact in the future. And whether it's Bitcoin or if it's um, Wikipedia, they're maintained by people who don't get paid. Their incentive is different. And I wrote, a, I wrote something on my LinkedIn page, why no one gives a F about your digital transformation. And part of that is the way it never stops, it always continues. And for your students, you're gonna inherit this cycle. I'm gonna be dead, but you guys are gonna inherit this cycle. So connect with your peers, not just locally, but also internationally and globally. And if you're the faculty, it does take you to say, oh, this is happening. We're doing digital transformation is happening at the speed of business. Not let's sit around the room and talk for three or four weeks to, do, to make a decision. Because it's happening at the speed of business because as a businessman, when I make a decision, there's some analysis to it. I actually wrote in my phone this morning, I would take notes in my not so trusted device, that economists were full of shit. And there's a reason I thought this. Because if they were right, why do we have cycles? Why do we have recessions? What are they basing this on? And so I, I wrote this in my phone this morning. And so as faculty, it's yes, you, you know something to be true, but when's the last time you challenged why you thought that? And so it's part of that is be curious, ask children things. Uh, my ne one of my nephews, he was drawing on the tile on the floor with uh, lipstick. And I say to him, um, Adlai, he's like three and a half at the time. I'm like, Adlai, I'm going to give you papaws if you draw on the floor with the tile. Spank him. And so two or three hours later, he's back on the floor, his grandmother's lipstick in his hand, and he's drawing on the floor. So I go get a spoon. I'm going to give him a spanking. He's ruining my tile. And he says to me, and he looks at me and I say, didn't I tell you not to, not to use the lipstick on the tile? And he says, grout. And I was like, I want
want to beat you, but I think I've been outsmarted because he had asked me what that was. And I told him that was the grout. And so my two and a half year old nephew outsmarted me because I can't spank him because he wasn't drawn on until he was drawn on the grout. And so as faculty, it's when's the last time you fundamentally questioned how you were communicating things? Because, you know, I told uh, Rainier says, oh yeah, just come up, send us something. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll see. Because I could give you charts, I could give you graphs, I could give you data, but would you care? But when we talk about David Hasselhoff and Kit, at a very minimum, you're gonna remember that. Because Uber doesn't care about passenger cars. Volvo, they're in bed with Google um, for transportation because their driverless fleet of shipping of trucks, they wanna automate truck drivers out of their jobs. That's step one. Because when the trucks talk to each other, Volvo's a great company, Google's another great company, they have almost endless research budget, because they know if they can remove the human element, much like Oracle, they can increase their profits exponentially. And so it falls to the professors to put on your time caps, travel to 2027, travel to 2037, to be thinking like the Japanese do when they do business plans, they think in 100 years tranches. Because they're not thinking, they're not concerned about today, whatever. The next 10 years, sort of important. The next 50 and 100, you need to be teaching your kids technologies that don't exist now. How do you do that? That's the challenge for the faculty. Because you guys all learn something, but how do you literally teach somebody something that doesn't exist? And so that's something even I struggle with. Fortunately, I have a couple drinks and it comes to me. <laughs> no other questions? Oh, we got a question right here. The future of value is not monetary. Because in three years, a chief information officer will be an AI. So if you're a chief information officer, you're getting automated. <laughs> you're gonna be an AI. And if you're not there in three years, I'll wait four. Because Moore's Law, sort of not relevant, but sort of still works, it's that progress. My phone is 57 weeks old, because I haven't updated it. So it tells me how old it is. And, but generational-wise, technology-wise, it's a brick. And so in three years, your CIO, your CTO, they're gonna be an AI. Because if you're CEO, why hire a human when you can hire something that's infinitely smarter as on blockchain and making the decisions for you to improve your logistics, your finance, your operations. And so if there's a, C, if there's a CIO in the, in the audience, you should be concerned as well as a CTO. If you're studying information analytics, I'm going to be able to ask Watson, Siri, or Alexa, or Cortana, Cortana what, is the, what is the average age of people in Zimbabwe who are under five foot six? And it's gonna just tell me. All that data analytics you learned, it's just gonna tell me. And so how do you hire people? How do you compensate them, keep them engaged when you can automate them? And so the future of value won't be in money. It will, will define it a little bit differently. It's a really good question. You can come drink with us later. Yeah. Is that it? Excellent. I'm going to turn this over to somebody smarter than me who is, I don't know who this is. Is there a name over here? Uh. <laughs> Thank you.